So we're definitely going to get to the fire content, but I have to start off on a positive note or I'm just going to lose my shit. This episode of Mob Psycho 100, absolutely incredible. I love how it starts off. You're seeing Mob as a young boy and, you know, it's kind of the mob that we used to know. This current mob is a much more developed and fleshed out character. Honestly, Mob has become one of the most fleshed out and developed characters that I can recall in recent memory. He starts off and freaks out anytime he gets a skinned knee. Anything simple could make him become emotional, and we see what emotional mob is like. This episode, we see him skin his knee in that race. He's pushing himself to his absolute limit, but he doesn't cry, he doesn't freak out, he pushes through, and the only reason he doesn't finish that race is because his body just physically couldn't do it. That is amazing. It's such a brilliantly directed and very subtle way to start the episode off, showing you him in the past being a little bit of a crybaby, to then seeing what Mob was willing to do in this episode because he wanted to get to top 10 so he could ask his crush out, and it was beautiful. We see the same type of Mob reaction at the end of this week's episode when he sees the burned body of what appears to be his family. I mean, one could throw a curveball, I don't know, but to see him get to whatever percentage that was in the reaction, we start the episode off with him freaking out because of a skinned knee. We grow past that. We see him be a strong man, but like anyone who sees what the hell just happened to supposedly his family, that's going to shake most people, but most people don't have unlimited amount of power stored up in their body, an angry mob is not something that you should take lightly. Holy hell, this was a great episode. I think the entire fire sequence was brilliantly done because you know mob can walk in there and probably get out alive, not that hurt. The issue is mob, even though he's grown so much, if he truly believes his family's dead, I don't know what could hold him back because he's mentioning as he's walking through this building of you know, set a flame. It doesn't matter if they lost their house, it's bad, but as long as they got each other, they can rebuild. And I think just seeing Dimple, you know, just being like, don't look, and then just how they're cutting away all these different styles, you're seeing, you felt hot watching this scene because of how well they detailed the flame. And typically, I usually only find animation for fire good in movie formats for anime. I find that a lot of time with TV production. It just doesn't really get the right message across. Studio Bones, they absolutely did. There was polish and care to that scene, which is why it's such a great scene and how well directed it was. It's so horrible to see that situation. I mean, I don't know exactly where they're going to go with this, but that hurts. It really, really does, especially after seeing such a pleasant episode. You know, even though he failed the race, he did so well. His parents were so proud of him. His brother was so proud of him and that asshole had to return to get his revenge, Mob is going to go in, and I really fear that no one can hold him back. And unless he sees his family, I don't know what can ultimately stop him. That is exciting. This episode was fantastic. I love how you're seeing Reg and you're seeing Dimple. Like, he's such a changed man. He's really grown, and the fact that, you know, he has this plan of, you know, asking his crush out, he wanted to get, you know, 10th place at the very least, so he would have, like, something to show for his actions. It's very clear that this girl would probably go out with Mob if he just asked right away. I mean, you get a bit of a scary moment where she's asking like, hey, I got this crush from cram school, but it was really just her trying to test Regan to make sure he wasn't a con artist or a scammer, and his answer was pretty believable, because most of the time, the stuff that Regan takes up is pretty normal stuff that he just uses his intelligence to kind of navigate and give kind of helpful advice or massages, things like that, and when it does get to actual poltergeist and things like that, that's when Mob kind of handles all the business, but, you know, just seeing Dimple, which I think Dimple is one of the best parts of the season, because he's such a funny character, he does so many ridiculous things, like, kind of screaming in Regan's ear when they're training, or how he'll just be like, why aren't you getting flustered, Mob? I'm trying to say that you might be, you know, being asked out, but he's not being flustered anymore. There's so much growth to this boy, and it just puts this character in another light, so kind of seeing the steady build up, all the cute moments, all the fun moments of him with his bodybuilding club, you got the return of the Jojo looking character, kind of giving him his running shoes, trying to be all, you know, mature, like, hey, I'm gonna give you these shoes, it's it's from the goodness of my heart, but then we learn that it's just because the shoes didn't fit him. There's so many little moments that as you're watching him build up, it's nothing that important, really it is just him wanting to do well in this race so he can ask his crush out, and I was on board with that, I thought just because it was really highlighting Mob's character growth, you're seeing all the characters really recognize this is a different man, we're seeing that Regan truly is a changed man, he's saying like, Mob, if you really want to train and you want to be the best, take the week off, focus on what you need to do, and just do that, that's not what typically Regan would do, and I'm glad that the events of last week really are opening his eyes, and seeing that Mob is a changed man, Dimple sees it, Regan sees it, his family sees it, everyone is seeing 
that mob is different. Hell, even his teachers are seeing, like, you're not so gloomy anymore. Like, that's the development that really puts Season 1 and Season 2 in a completely different light that showcases why Mob Psycho 100 is so loved by manga readers as well as anime originals, because there's so much great development, and not even just for Mob, but Ragan and Dimple, his family, and just seeing that horrible reaction, that's why it hurts us alongside Mob. Because, on one hand, you're like, you want him to get revenge, but you feel like if he gets consumed, Mob 2 will be destroyed by those flames alongside his family, and, like, that hurts. And, like, that's what's so great about this, is because even when, like, Mob's brother, he's not anyone, like, I'm overly attached to, but I would never want him to burn alive or die, because what would that do to Mob? Well, we're seeing what that would do. The animation and directing was so fun. I absolutely love how much they just shift around the style. There's so many great comedy scenes. Honestly, stuff that made me laugh because it was just so perfectly executed alongside the voice acting, alongside just the really stunning visual directing. And then you get all these like little moments. Like it truly felt like one of the safest episodes of Mob Psycho 100. Like when that doorbell rang, I was expecting his crush to be there, being like, oh, is Mob home? It was going to be something sweet and adorable. And then when you see that asshole, you're just like, you got to be freaking kidding me. We start the episode off showing that Mob is no longer the scared little boy who cries over a skin knee, and you're gonna make him walk in on burned bodies upstairs? Make it like a horror thriller anime? You gotta be kidding me, Studio Bones and One. What the hell are you doing? But I do love you for doing it, but I hate you all at the same time. That was amazing. That was such a brilliantly directed episode because literally, I don't think anyone who didn't read the manga would expect that to happen. I know he did say eventually he would return, but the entire episode, like I know some people will probably say like when he was approaching the door, you would assume, well, something bad has to happen. But for myself, because it was so focused on Mob's love, it truly felt to me like it would be his crush at the door. Like that's who would pop up because, you know, she saw that Mob's kind of, you know, he's a stud in his own way, right? Like that's where I was going with it. And then he has to pop up and you know, I was expecting carnage after that, but uh, to see the entire house engulfed in flames. Okay, I didn't expect bodies. Like, I mean, I still think there's a chance they could be alive and maybe it was a decoy, but I don't know. I, it really, things can happen and I don't know where the studio and one wants to go, but that's exciting. I mean, this probably is one of the best directed episodes just because of the punchline, because it sets itself up and feels so safe that really nothing feels overly dangerous about this episode it really is about mob showcasing his growth showcasing what he's willing to do so when you get that reveal when you get that shocked and awe mob really trying to stay calm but slowly creeping up to 100 percent trying to kind of decompress try to be like it's okay i can just meditate the house can be rebuilt we can get another one we got insurance you know as long as we got the family that's all that important he's still creeping up for obvious reasons because watching your house be burned alive is not something that you are gonna enjoy but to see the reaction this it hurts and that's why you know this is doing a really solid job because when it hurts you know this is an important anime the voice acting the soundtrack the directing was so great and i just like as great as that punchline was at the end of the episode i just loved the entire content Honestly, I was ready to say that this was one of the best episodes of the season, even before the house was burnt down. Because I was like, I really like seeing what Mob's doing. I love seeing characters respond to Mob being like, you know what, Mob? You go, boy. Like, even though we know realistically he was not going to get to top 10, it was amazing to see how much he was pushing himself and seeing what the characters were willing to do to support him. Reagan is being so damn supportive, even more than normal, and it's great to see. I love seeing just where these characters are going and the development that we're witnessing. It's why it's one of the best anime of the season. It's why it would probably be one of the best anime of the year, because the character development is amazing. As great as the visuals are, as stunning as the animation and visual directing is, what sells this season and what sells the Mob Psycho property to me is seeing the main development between Mob and Reagan and even some of the main supporting characters. And even though I don't really care about Mob's parents, I was really touched by how, you know, supportive and happy they were to see where their son is going because as long as the other characters are recognizing Mob's amazing growth, and we haven't even known Mob as long as some of these characters have, that's what you hope to see, and that's why it's such a damn great episode, and I want episodes 9, 10, 11, give me all the remaining episodes, I gotta see how this shit's gonna conclude, and that's why it's so great. Honestly, I've never been more happy and crushed from a Mob Psycho 100 episode than this one. In some ways, I kinda wanna give this one the edge as being my favorite episode, but at the same time, the Reagan stuff last week I still think has to take the cake, but how great it was directed to give us this sense of security and hope and optimistic outlook on this property to just the smoke in the distance to just... Really? 
you're really going to do this? That was incredible. Honestly, it just keeps throwing new and interesting and horrible and brilliant techniques our way, and it keeps leaving me surprised. It doesn't matter if it's focusing on a character or a theme or just an idea. This season is incredible, and it just makes season one that much better. So when I go to rewatch season one and two, which I'll probably do when this season wraps up, I'm going to have a completely different outlook on season one because of the events of season two. This episode... Brilliant. Absolutely love it. Gonna need to decompress after this one. Let me know whatever you thought of this week's episode of Mob Psycho 100 down in the comment section below. Manga readers, adaptation. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it fantastic? Let me know. Anime originals. Did you feel safe like myself and then that burning down sequence, did it just completely shock you? Or did you completely see this coming? Let me know whatever you're feeling down in that comment section below. Remember to leave a like if you did enjoy and also hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. But until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.